Uh, not yet. I'm waiting on it, though. Yeah, um, we heard just snippets about the workout and what you do. Can you give us a little detail on what went on? Uh, really, just put me through basically uh, not a warm up, but what we usually do for individual in uh, Texas A&M. I'll do some up down, do some pass rushing drills, go over some bags. Then I'll just get your blood flowing and get you ready for practice. And uh, have me run a, I guess a 200. Have me run down, run back, warm up, stretch, and then went through the bags, and that was pretty much it. Was it a tough workout? Is anything you did with any other teams? Only did one workout. Was it Miles, what have the last 24 hours been like for you and the other guys? They said other guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> you go for it, you go for it. Uh, it was pretty relaxing for me. You know, it, was, it was stressful waiting for that that uh, time to tick down, uh, waiting for that call. But other than that, I was surrounded by family and friends, so I didn't feel any real pressure. I just trying to make sure I got some sleep. Yeah, kinda, I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, you know, it was, it was a blessing. This whole process, you know, you have to go through it. But, uh, you know, I was with my friends and family. Um, great, great music, great food, you know, all positive vibes. So, you know, that definitely, you know, took the load off a little bit. Uh, piggybacking what they're saying, it was just, you know, same for me. Uh, just great seeing the family, the friends, you know, uh, just as, as happy as, as I am. You know, they were so happy to see me uh, when my, my name was, you know, called and everything. So it was just a, a big, big blessing, like Jabril said. Where were you last night, and did you have the celebration dance planned for a while, or was that just kind of spontaneous? Um, I was at uh, any stars in New Jersey, um, you know, at the frat mansion. You know, I'm a member of Omega Sci Fi, um, so they were for I was fortunate enough, you know, they you know let us use their their mansion, you know, to host my draft party. And no, that wasn't planned. Um, you know, it's it's various marches or you know hops that we you know we do, but. Um, that one, I kind of just freestyled a little bit. <laughs> For people who don't know about a lot about you, how would you describe yourself to Browns fans? Um, you know, I'm a hard worker. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm more competitive than anything. You know, I probably, you know, hate losing more than I like winning. Um, I'm a tenacious kid, very smart. Um, and, you know, I'm a guy who's going to leave it all out there, you know, for the team and, you know, for the fans as well. With the goals that you set for yourself um, in the ESPN magazine article, you know, breaking the, the rookie staff record and, and the uh, single season staff record and exceeding the greatness of Jerry Rice and all the great things that you said, do you um, do you ever do you get concerned about you know putting a target on your back by by setting such lofty goals for yourself? Not really. I mean, the targets on me, but targets on everybody else as well. You know, I got to study my opponent, and I'm sure they're. You know, keeping their eyes on me to make sure, you know, know what I'm doing. But I'm coming up, I'm going against one of the best ever and Joe Thomas. So I'll be well prepared for everybody who's upcoming. Jabril, you're somewhat familiar with playing football in the state of Ohio. Um, but you are so you're going to win over this uh, Buckeye fan base here? Um, I'm not really worried about, you know, the Buckeyes. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be a member of the you know, Cleveland Browns organization. You know, um, you know, I'm not really into all the little petty stuff. You know, uh, I never was. Um, you know, I'm just trying to have you know the best career I possibly can, be the best person and player I could be. You know, you know, help this organization win ball games. Braylon Edwards once did the O H uh, I O for during a timeout. You think you might join that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> y'all, are, y'all are wrong. Hey, I, I expected it. I expected it. Last night, you were asked about the other quarterbacks in this division, and the first one you said you'd like to get to is Ben Roethlisberger. Did you say that because you know that's your first game, or because it's the guy who beats Cleveland a lot? Both. Didn't know that's your first game. Yes. So I mean, he's my first target, and I'll, uh, I've been watching him for a very long time. I'm just growing up, and so finally get to face him and uh, scheme against him and his uh, left tackle and the whole off the line, and 
I don't know what I'm up against. Miles, there's a lot of expectations that come with being the number one pick. Obviously, everybody's going to be targeting you. How do you manage those expectations going into the season and not trying to put too much pressure on yourself to, to try to prove that you were worthy of a number one pick? No. Well, as you heard, I have some pretty lofty goals for myself, so I don't really listen to anybody else's expectations. I keep myself grounded with my, you know, my family and my friends, and they always help me you know, keep my head straight and keep focused. I'm not worried about you what know, everybody else is thinking or the negative comments anybody else wants to, to make. I have you know, the best I could you know, ever dream of right now, and if I could just maintain my focus and keep on working hard on the field, it will stay that way. David, um, the Browns just today released their starting tight end. So what are you going to do to to make this offense better? Um, I'm going to do the, the, the same thing I would do if, even if he was here, and that's just compete, you know, just do a, do, just work really hard, and I think I'll be all right. You talk about if you maintain your focus. Like, is that a worry of yours, or just you know that that's what it's going to take to be the player you want to be? That's what it's going to take. I mean, any... NFL veteran would tell you that you know, there are some distractions off the field, and I uh, didn't fall into them in uh, the college level. So, same thing. Don't worry about all the the noise outside of the the field. Just you know, worry about what you're doing, why you got here, and why these people brought you to this you know, great franchise. And that's because you can play ball. Anyone about you, especially your coaches, they talk about your love of the game and your work ethic and things like that. What is it about football that you love so much? I love to hit. I love I love to hit and I love to compete. And so those two things combined, that's why me and him are you know, sitting by each other. Miles, I heard a radio interview before the draft. You said you almost picked Ohio State because of dinosaurs. And then the subject was changed. So can you explain why, why you said that or why, why you almost did? Number two paleontology program in the whole nation. So, if if SEC wasn't so close to home, I might have went to Ohio State. But since they were and uh, they were coming off a really good season with Johnny and they said I could be a cornerstone in their defense and their team, I decided to go there. Miles, when was the last time you didn't feel like you were the best player on the field? Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> You always got to have that you know, confidence in your mind. You don't, you don't want to be arrogant about it, but if you prepare yourself you know, during the off season and every week before the game with film, setting your opponent and just practicing hard, then you should feel prepared. You should, you should feel you know, ready for the guy who's in front of you. And that's not being you know, a butt about it or arrogant. You just, you're confident that you can you know, win any rep against the, the guy that uh, you're facing against. What's the story behind the... Uh photo you tweeted last night with the diaper. <laughs> is that first is that you and then can you just explain what you're doing? It's, it's a me as a kid and uh it was funny, I thought it looked like the success kid who was uh pumping his hand in air on the beach. But it was really, really just me trying to break a rope that was on my arm. <laughs> and so I thought it was funny and uh I just put a little nice caption on it and it was cap off the night. Miles, can you talk about other facets of, of your personality, the things that sort of set you apart a little bit. I mean, there's not many guys that, you know, we talk to uh, that, that sit up there and, and love the poetry of Maya Angelou and write poetry and things like that. And if you can run us through some of some of those kind of things a little bit, and also if you have a, a, a verse of a poem or something that you've written that you could recite, <laughs> I, I for one would love to hear it. <laughs> Maybe another time of that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I feel like everybody has their own interests, their own hobbies. Maybe they're just too shy to say it. Or they just keep to themselves, or they keep it between their, their friends and their family. I just I have no problem you know, sp speaking about myself in that manner. I'm, I'm not ashamed of the things I like and the things I like to do in my off time. And I'm glad to let y'all know that I have you know, other hobbies, other interests that you know, keep me grounded that keeps stress from you know, bothering me or taking away from my game and that when I when I get, get away from the game that you know, I'm happy to enjoy myself but when I'm back here and I'm on the field that you know those things go away and it's it's time to win. Jibriel, you're, you're obviously going to have safety next to your name on the roster but we all know about your versatility. How ultimately do you think you're going to be defined at the NFL level? Um, 
you know, whatever, you know, Coach Jackson's plan is for me, you know, I'm going to attack, you know, 110%. Um, you know, so it's definitely going to start with, you know, being a returner, being in the defensive backfield. Um, you know, he mentioned some offense to me as well. So uh, <laughs> we're going to see how that goes. Can you describe your, um, I'm just the ball in your hand? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't. Yeah. So, sorry, are, are you going to be maybe in his ear a little bit to get the ball in your hands early on? Am I going to be? In Hugh Jackson's ear to get the ball in your hands? On um, ball, you know? Not really. You know, I'm just going to, you know, take it day by day. Whatever I'm asked to do, I'm going to do to the best of my ability. Um, you know, I just want to do whatever I can to help this team win ball games. Jabril, how would you describe your coverage skills in the secondary and what aspect of that, you know, would you like to improve just with the questions surrounding that? Um, you know, I definitely, you know, have to improve in that aspect. Um, you know, I was actually playing the box more so this year. Um, but, you know, that's nothing that doesn't come with repetition. Um, you know, I just didn't get a lot of repetitions at it. You know, my, my man-to-man -man work came in the game sometimes, um, you know, but, you know, covering a deep third or a quarter or a deep half, you know that's something that you know I've 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 done all my life, so you know I'm not I'm not too worried about it, and um, you know I didn't I don't think you know the the coaching staff was too worried about it either, um, you know because they know what kind of ball player I am, and you know, they know I'm gonna work to you know be where I need to be. Miles, you said you were gonna watch the draft last night. What was your reaction then when the Browns took Jabril? I was excited. You know, I know he can play ball. I've seen him, you know, make many big time plays against great opponents and. I know he can you know, really help us. Did you really what about you two guys lined up on maybe on the same side? Have you thought about maybe what kind of damage you guys could inflict? Um, I mean, yeah, you know, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a sight to see. <laughs> the fact that you had the, the Duluth sample and the Browns uh, took a chance on you, anyways, and still drafted you in the first round. Do you have an extra, you know, sense of gratitude to the Browns about that, and maybe some? desire to, to repay them for, you know, overlooking that and believing in you? I mean, you know, there's a lot of speculation on, you know, a dilute sample, which is just that dilute. Um, you know, they know I'm a high character guy, don't have any off the field issues, you know, never failed the drug test in my life, never been arrested. Um, so if a dilute sample, you know, was my worst hiccup in, you know, my whole life, you know, uh, I'll take that on the chin, you know, but Definitely, definitely a sense of gratitude um, just because they believed in me, you know, with all the negativity going on and, you know, believing in my play. Um, you know, so I'm definitely indebted into, you know, being the best person and player I can be. And I, I promise Coach Jackson I will do so. David, you said last night that you, you like the contact playing tight end. What, what's your favorite thing to do to lay out a strong blocker, catch a touchdown? I mean, I th I feel like they're both really important, you know, and I and I, I've done both, so um, I don't really have like a, a favorite thing. I just I just love playing, I love competing. Jabril, what do you think of coming to a team that was one in fifteen? <clears throat> you know, it's just it's all about you know stepping stones and you know stacking little wins. Um, you know, when when I went to Michigan, you know, we you know had a losing record as well. You know, so I like being a part of you know, things that you help from the ground up, you know. So it's that's not really an, an issue. You know, we know it's going to be a process, and, you know, we're all in, we're all bought in, and we're all here to, you know, do what we have to do to, you know, help this team win ball games, and that's, that's exactly what we're going to do. For both Miles and Jabril, um, you got to meet Greg Williams face-to-face -to -face today when you came in the building. Uh, what, what was your first impression of, of him, and how excited are you to get to play for a coach as energetic as him? I mean, and Coach Price, same kind of guy, same kind of high energy guy. He's gonna get in your face. He's gonna scream. He's gonna he's gonna yell. But you know, he has the best interest at heart. You know, whether it's on the field or off the field, he's trying to make you a better football player and a better man. And I can sense the same thing in Greg Williams. And I know he's gonna make me into one hell of a football player and a great man. Definitely piggybacking off that. Uh, you know, Coach Coach Donnie Brown was kind of those two kind of share similarities. Um, you know, so it's, it's it's just gonna be fun playing for another you know high high energy coach. You know who's gonna you know challenge you and you know try to take you to places where you can't take yourself. So I'm definitely I'm definitely looking forward to it. Same with you, David. And what, what were your first impressions of Hugh Jackson? I don't know if you met him you know, in this whole process. But what were right. your 
impressions of him? Well, I um, I took a, a 30 visit here. Um, you know, I fell in love with it. You know, I had um, two teammates that I played with in college that came here, Duke Johnson and Tracy Howard, who, but Tracy, you know, left recently. Um, so I was excited when I came here, you know, I, I enjoyed it, I enjoyed the visit. It was a really fun time for me. So I, was, I mean, when they called my name, it was even more exciting and a blessing to just to be here. Can you address um, how well you may or may not know Johnny Manziel? And then, uh, you know, because you're the next Texas A&M uh, person to, to set foot, you know, from the first round in, in these parts, uh, how do you feel about how Johnny's career went? I mean, do you still kind of pull for him? Do you keep in touch with him at, at all? And then do you hope to change the legacy of, you know, Texas A&M? And the Cleveland Browns. I don't know Johnny. I mean, I've met him once or twice. I've shook his hand, but I don't know him that well. And he was a year before me. But uh, I mean, he's he's an acquaintance and he's a an alumni. But other than that, we have no real connection. And but that connection that we have is you no know, Texas and them. And I always root for him because of that. And you know, there's. There's this, uh, you know, shade over, you know, Cleveland Browns with Texas A&M, but I, I can only talk with my play. I can, only, I can talk with, you know, my words, and I can say I'm going to do this and that, but, you know, practice and games is where you you can uh, do all your talking, get all everything out of the way, and really challenge people's words. Miles, what do you think uh, you have, you know, there's always this learning curve for any player from any position in the NFL. Um, can you, what do you have to do to shorten that learning curve? What do you think awaits you in, in learning how to get to the quarterback at this level? I mean, the, the moves are still there. You know, the speed and the, the talent is still there. But uh, it's, it's different guys with level of talent. So that means you got to study up. You got to go against you know, great guys every day and not take any days off. You got to stay in the film room, you know, preparing for you know, the Steelers. And they're not here yet, and they're months away, but you know, they've been playing for years. These are pros, these are grown men who've been doing this for years and you know, have won against rookies, have won against the greats. So you have to be you know, on your toes. That means studying and getting tips from you know, the, the veterans on your team and just making sure that uh, you have everything that you could possibly do you know, done. Dave, where are you with your learning curve, both in terms of where you think you need to be and where you can be in the long run? Well, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm 20 years old, you know, so uh, I think I have like a, a <laughs> bunch of uh, things to learn, you know, just uh, whether it's like, you know, uh, physical or, or uh, mental, you know, um, I just feel like I have a really high ceiling that I can reach and I just, uh, you know, with the, the help of the coaches, and just hard work, I feel like I'll, I'll eventually get there. I know everybody in the NFL is a real good athlete, but Miles, we saw what you did at the Combine. And Jabril, people say you might be one of the better athletes in the draft. And then David, I saw the sports science thing on ESPN today. Um, did the Browns really stress that when they were talking to you guys before the draft, that that's something they valued in you guys? And have you seen each other as athletes and you're just wild sometimes? Well, definitely not this guy right here. <laughs> he, he too big to run that fast. <laughs> but uh, but uh, nah, man, they didn't really, you know. Of course, they want you know great athletes. Every NFL team wants a great athlete, you know. But it's it, it was more so, you know, they want high character guys who really love football. You know, a lot of people say they love football, but have ulterior motives. You know, just want to just want the money. You know, but uh, you know, we up here for sure love football. You know, we. I'm pretty sure we stressed that to them, you know, and they saw that. And, um, you know, they can tell in our play that we're passionate about it. And, you know, I think I think that was more so the, the main thing, you know, high character guys who love football. David, what did, how close are you with Duke Johnson? And what has he told you about playing here in the city and everything? Yeah, um, so I'm pretty close with Duke and uh, Tracy. Uh, Tracy visited uh, Miami at the campus more often, so I would see him more often. And he told me that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love the city if I do end up here. Because um, when, I, when I visited, I told him I was going to visit. He told me I was going to love it here. The, the people here are great. The you know, fans are very uh, loyal. You know, and I'm just having a great time. And 
Uh, I, I, it's funny, I had, I had a gut feeling I was going to be here and, and ended up here, so I'm, just, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be here. I had a feeling too. I did, so. <laughs> How long um, uh, ago do you remember when you first talked to Greg Williams? Because I understand you pretty much been having a conversation for a while. Uh, where does it go back to prior to senior? Well, you weren't even at the senior bowl, but right after your <laughs> after your bowl game or what? No, uh, I mean, the first time we talked was at dinner. Like, what, what calendar part of the year? January. <laughs> January, February, and uh, you're just telling me um, stay out of trouble. You, know, <laughs> you you have some potential, so you no know, don't don't squander on any little little things that you might you know think about doing on your off time. Just you know keep your keep your head on straight and uh, keep on doing big things. Does that uh, dialogue continue up until the draft? Definitely. I mean, he was he was checking up on me. Making sure that I was still working hard, still getting in the weight room, still you know, maintaining my conditioning, and just uh, keep me in check. Two questions. Um, first of all, what was it like to get um, Jim Brown uh, on the phone with you last night? And then the other thing was, um, I'm just wondering, I, I read something about Jeff Fisher helping you. Um, how beneficial do you think it was to have an NFL head coach kind of leading you? It, you know, in the pre-draft process. I mean, Jim Brown's you know, arguably the greatest football player of all time. So just hearing him you know, speak on the phone was just you know, absolutely amazing. You know, couldn't have had my announcement come in a better way, and I appreciate you know him doing that and the the Browns doing that for me. And Jeff Fisher definitely he helped me. Uh, he helped in my decision to actually you know compete in the draft or compete in the combine because I was kind of having second thoughts. I wanted to make sure my ankle was absolutely 100% and I was just wavering. He was like, no, this is a big thing and you know, it gets no bigger than this. You're going to be on a, the, the largest stage of them all and if you, you show out, then there'll be no doubts. And he said, if you, if you know your stuff as well, if you're confident in your, your football intelligence and uh, you're you confident in your ankle, then you'll be just fine. How bad was the ankle injury last year? Yeah, probably the, one of the worst foot injuries I've had. And uh, I fractured my growth plate when I was in uh, high school in a weight, weightlifting accident. But you know, that didn't hang on for so long. It was, a, it was a thing, it healed up, went right back to working. But that, that ankle sprain, it, it hung on for a while. And did they ever say you could sit out now? You know? Possibility. It, it was. I mean, they, they wanted me to, you know, to get some rest, but I love my guys too much to sit out and uh, you know, watch them without me. I, I know I wanted to be there and you know, struggling, you know, grinding with them and just doing my best for them because they deserve it. And so do the coaches and the fans and everybody else who's, who've been a part of you know, my time at Texas A&M. Were you like 75% of what you'd be a normal self? Or? Around there. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't couldn't get that explosiveness, that that step past the the offensive tackle like I wanted, or you know that step to the left, you know when I'm trying to go to the guard. But I gave what I could. Hey, Miles, if you haven't met him yet, would you look forward to uh, meeting Warren Sapp and telling him what you think? No, not at all. I mean, he has his own opinion, and uh, maybe he'll change it by the end of the year. Miles, how does this franchise get it turned around? Culture and attitude, you know, just changing you know, what people are thinking by having an attitude of, you know, everybody has, you know, us down and saying that, you know, it might be 0 16, 1 15, whatever they want to say, and that nothing's going to change. But they brought in, you know, playmakers and guys who have an attitude of things will get changed right away. And, you know, this is the same atmosphere that they have right now, that, you know, it's not going to be the same, and that we're going to. We're going to change things right away that uh, we can win and we will win. Now, you guys, it's, very unusual, it's very unusual to have three first round picks, and this obviously doesn't happen very often. As you guys have walked around today, have you talked amongst yourselves a little and said, hey, we're going to be the, the start of the turnaround and we're going to be the, the foundation, you know, this first round class right here? I mean, no, we didn't really talk about that. You know, we're just more eager to just 
gel with the guys in the locker room, learn from the veterans. You know, they they set a standard. You know, we just gonna follow suit, and do what we have to do to help them win ball games. They're the foundation, and we're just you know add another piece to the puzzle, and we're just trying to complete the picture so we can start you know to win games again. Here, especially Miles, but all you guys is meet LeBron James. <laughs> meet LeBron James on your short list of things you'd like to do. Well, that would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. <clears throat> Good. Good. All right, we're gonna pose for some photos with the group. <clears throat> you gotta push your chairs in the stand.